Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and I'm going to do another video about M Sound Factory. And this is one I've been excited to talk about for a while, because today I'm going to talk about physical modeling. And I want to do this in a series, because I'm really excited about this topic, and I think there's probably other people that are also. So M Sound Factory is great for physical modeling. It has a few modules that can do physical modeling, and because it's modular, there's lots of different ways to hook it up together. And so the ones I'm going to talk about today are the string module and the resonator module. So let's get started with those. So you see here we just have the basic uh, generator here. And let's start with the string module. So here you see it on screen. And if I play something, it sounds like a string. So you have lots of controls here. Some of these are easy to understand, like volume just makes it louder. A widening, so if I make it really wide like this, or I can make it mono. I like it mono. For me, that just sounds better. The ones that may not be quite as, uh, maybe you may not know about them, I should say, are the low pass. So this isn't a typical low pass. If I move this down, you'll hear the difference. So you notice it doesn't sound like a typical low pass, and that's because the low pass is in the feedback path. So all these types of resonators or this string module is using kind of like a comb filter. So in this case, the low pass is in the feedback path. So as you hear, as you move it up, it sounds like brighter, like a, a really bright string. If you move it down, it almost sounds like you're muting the string. Or it could actually be like if you're hitting the side of a like a plastic PVC pipe or uh, like a drum or something. Okay, and the saturation, this is the saturation inside the feedback path. Um, I don't think I really need to go over that. The attack is just basically the attack. So if you have it up really high like this, move it down. I like it down like that personally. And noise seed, uh, this is a little bit complicated. If I leave it here off, it will randomize the noise seed. So every single time I hit a note, it'll sound a little bit different like this. So it's going between different noise seeds, but if I move it like this, it'll stay at the same one. So every single note will sound the same. So you can kind of choose whichever one you want. I think maybe randomize is a little bit better. So it just gives it a little bit of variation. And I think that's one of the great things about physical modeling is it gives you those natural variations. Uh, the pitch I think is easy to understand. So this is a really easy way to just get some string sound. So if you just want like, oh, I want like a string sound to maybe go with your arpeggio or something uh, under it, like a layer, this is good and easy to use. But for me personally, I prefer to use the resonator mod module just because there's more you can do with it. So let's get rid of this and open that up. So here's the resonator and it looks almost exactly the same, but if I press a key, there's no sound and you're running like, why? And it's because the resonator needs an exciter. So let's make an ex exciter. And I, you're probably thinking, okay, like what is an exciter? An exciter is something that will make this start resonating. And so there's lots of things we can use. So one of the ones that's not so good, I think, is just a normal oscillator. So if you're using this, like, oh, I'll use an oscillator, like a sine wave. And you think, oh, this will work. You're like, hey, this doesn't sound that different if I turn the resonator off. There's really not that much of a difference. And I don't think this works so well with a normal oscillator like this. There are ways you can make this work, but I prefer not to use this for this usage. One that works better is something with a uh, full spectrum. So one thing we can use is white noise or any type of noise, really. It doesn't have to be white. It can be pink or any color you want. Uh, here, I'll play it. And at first, it has a comb filter sound, but it doesn't sound that great. But we can change that. And one of the ways we can change that is by messing with the low pass and the feedback. So let's turn the feedback up. And then I can mess with the low pass here. And it almost sounds like a blown instrument. And so there's things we could do just with this. So if I move this down like two octaves here, you have that kind of like industrial sound. Let me turn this down a little bit. So if I do that and let's say I 
put some effects here like um in turbo reverb and i want to make it almost like a a bram sound or something like you hear in a movie trailer turn this up and let's hear this might want to put a low pass filter on that too like this but yeah, we're not doing that today so th that's enough of that uh, but that's one of the things you can do with that so that's one of the uses of noise filter but if you want to make this a little bit more may useful besides just doing that type of sound one thing we can do is use an envelope here so we have the volume let's turn this down and let's use envelope one so we attach that there let's move the depth up to about 50 percent or so now we're going to go into the envelope one move this like this turn the sustain down and now we can adjust the decay however we like let's try like 50 now let's hear what this sounds like Oh, it sounds like that string. How did I do that? So if I turn the resonator off, you can hear it just by itself. Great, right? So. Cool. So that's one way we can use it. And instead of white noise, if we use something else, I'll just turn this off. So just uh, it's sustaining again like that. We can try one of these like clicks and pops, turn the probability down, like this. Sounds like almost like a, a bow being drug across a string. And the same thing with the stairs, it does something similar. I kind of like that sound, but there's actually another way to do this, uh, another exciter you can use, actually two others. So another one is just using a sample. So you see here we have the drum sampler in here. Just go in here and let's look at some natural samples like snare drums. Hi-hats. Let's try a closed hi-hat. We can even use bass drums if we want. And we can even use other more exotic sounds here. So let's try some effects. Let's try a baby rattle. A ball bounce. A bang. Ooh, sorry, that was a bit too loud. Uh, let's try a beer can. What you hear without the resonator? And there's a, many more things. I don't know if you want to hear all of these, but you get the idea. You can use almost any type of exciter here as a sample, just something that has a full spectrum. So almost like a noise works best with this, in my opinion. And last one, the one I generally use is, I use this drum synthesizer. Now, of course I can do the same thing with like a snare. So I'm using an electronic snare instead of the one I used before. But actually, I prefer to synthesize a sine sweep. Now, I could use the oscillator for this, but I think this is a little bit better and easier to understand for me. So let's move this out here so we can see it. This is bigger than it looks. Move it up here. So in here, it's actually very powerful, especially for creating sine sweeps. Turn the noise off. Move this to uh, zero decibels. Now, I have the oscillator here. And what I want to do is move this up and down. So this will be our sine sweep. Let's move this here like this. And it's not a triangle sweep, so I'll move this to a sine wave. Now, if we play it, that's not what we want. That's no good. And one of the reasons is it's probably too long. So let's move this down to 15 milliseconds. Let's just move this down a little bit more also. That actually sounds pretty good. Now, the next thing I can do is change the envelope. The envelope is a little bit strange here, but this looks better. And another thing, if I want to, I can engage a band pass filter. So if, let's say, I wanted to use a low pass here so there's not so much treble. Now, 
And I could do the same thing with the high pass if I wanted, but I think I'll just leave it like this. So for me, I think this is the best type of exciter. So if you notice when I play high, it doesn't have as much energy and the sustain is uh, much shorter as opposed to that goes on almost forever. So that's one of the great things about physical modeling. This happens uh, automatically. You don't have to program that in or anything. It's one of the properties of physical modeling, which is great in my opinion. And so I made a preset for this. So you don't have to do this every time. I suggest you do the same. So Science Suite Basic and same thing. Uh, another one is basic chirp here and this one I did almost the same thing except the difference is this one is key track So I have pitch shift per semitone. So as I move up it will uh, Not always go at 10k, but each note it will increase Now whether you want to do that or not is kind of your choice and another thing I should mention here is you see here the pitch shift that will change a few things so here if I have it if I move the pitch shift up so you heard the pitch doesn't actually change but because the exciter is changing it excites different frequencies so it'll sound brighter or duller depending on what you do so that's one of the things you might want to keep in mind when you're doing this another thing I want to show you is here if I go into the globals let me just turn the velocity off let me turn the volume down actually so now every note I hit no matter how hard I hit it will have the exact same velocity So one thing, if you want to replicate velocity using this, one thing you might want to use is a filter. So if I go into here, use a filter, and let's use a basic low pass filter, like low pass 24, and turn the resonance down a bit, maybe to 20. And now the filter's on, so. Now what I'm gonna do is set this by velocity. So here we see we have note velocity. I'll set this all the way up. Now the harder I hit the keyboard, the more velocity it's gonna have. So when I hit it with a low velocity, it's going to sound more muted like this. If I hit it harder, it opens up. Just like a real instrument. So that's one trick you might want to use. And in fact, there's lots of tricks with this. I can't really go over all of them today, but I think this is a really cool trick you can do with this. And another thing I should mention and talk about here is because this is modular, there's a lot of things we can do with this. So for example, I could add another resonator here like this. Let's say input one. So now it's going out of here. So we have two of the same things almost. Actually, if I want to make these the same, I'll go to the first one, which I already set up, copy it. I'll just paste this over here. And I can set things just slightly differently. Maybe make the low pass a little bit uh, less. And let's change the sense here. So a little bit detuned like this. So you can see it almost sounds like a detuned piano. So we can mess with that and mess with the sense and do more like this. Or make it tighter. And feel free to play with that all you want. You can actually send this to effects. You can send one of these to one type of effect. So out here, one, I could send this to, let's say a, uh, what do I want to do? Let's try a delay here. Yeah, let's ping pong it. Panorama here. Set this up like this. 
And let's set the second one to, let's say, a really big reverb like this. And so I could do something like this. So to me, that sounds really good and it took almost no time to do. So this is actually just one of the things you can do with this. And in future videos, I'll go over more you can do with this resonator and all sorts of cool things. But I thought this was kind of a basic one to show you the how to set this up if you're wondering, like, what does this do? Because I know maybe you see this resonator at first and you put it on the screen, and you're like, it doesn't sound like anything. So I thought this was good. Be sure to experiment with all sorts of different exciters. Um, there's other things you can do with this. Like I used a filter here, but you can use any type of other filter besides it, like a bandpass or something to alter the sound. And of course, you can try a sample. Who knows what something will sound like? You could try putting your own voice or anything you want through there. And one of the most important things when messing with any of this, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, is use the limiter. Physical modeling can quickly cause feedback loops, so the limiter is important for saving your equipment and saving your ears. But that's it for today. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll try to get to them when I can. Uh, of course, give me a thumbs up. Also, make sure you check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. And until next time, see you.